Right, we're still in complex number land. I won't talk about all of the um, obvious things. Most of you were fine getting the argument. One mark there on part two, you had to show me some working before you got to negative 64. And I think most of you recognize that, but I was surprised that a small number did not. And they just, they knew it. It's not hard to compute, but you didn't show me. You didn't show me. Okay, so there had to be some valid working, whether it was conversion to polar form or De Marvis theorem or the evaluation of the trig functions. As long as you had some of those, you didn't need every single one, but you needed a couple to show that you were actually computing something. Okay. Uh, part three, if you realize the denominator, then I handed that to you, but you can't just state the conjugate. That's not enough. I'm testing your ability to realize, not just identify, right? So there's an actual skill versus I know what something is, okay? Um, doing rather than identifying. And then you've got your simplified expression there and you did need to simplify it. Part B. Okay, quick note. Um, a few of you were a little too clever for yourselves and thought, ah, I know a shortcut. The complex conjugate root theorem. So awesome for finding roots. Cuts out half the work on one condition. When can you use the conjugate, complex conjugate root theorem? When? When the coefficients are real. And I know there's a one, there's a negative two, there's a negative seven, but I unfortunately know nothing about lambda, right? And he can be complex. Uh, you didn't, I mean, it turned out it wasn't, but you didn't know that, right? So that's why you can't, and that's why I hope you went through, I know my class, we went through the derivation of the complex conjugate root theorem. It's like four lines, right? But the mechanism depends on the fact that the coefficients are real. If it doesn't, then you can't use it. Um, you had to use the factor theorem and make some step in simplifying the complex numbers. So this line here, Whoops. Ooh, what's happened to my pencil? Oh, I've frozen. No, there we go. Um, this line here, which was basically binomial, there was a mark later on for your use of binomial theorem in the complex context. So you didn't get a mark just for stating that. You actually had to put some complex numbers together and simplify out. You didn't have to get to the end for the first mark, but you had to at least do, at least do something like this. Okay. Okay, part C. Part C. Again, some geometry. I suppose it didn't surprise me if you did poorly on the vector geometry question, vector complex number question in multiple choice. This was also poorly done. Uh, draw yourself a diagram. Draw yourself a diagram. I know you've got one there. Draw yourself a diagram because you'll understand what's going on much better if you do. You have to show some kind of geometric reasoning here because there's two marks, right? And then you had to find the complex number. Um, I did think it was helpful if you did mention something about, yeah, I know what a free vector is or a position vector. It wasn't required, but it showed me, yeah, you know what you're doing and you know how these complex numbers relate to each other. Okay. When you get to part two, remember I said, draw the diagram. This is where a lot of people fell down because they didn't draw a diagram. So their rotation was just all wrong. Maybe they rotated the square about its own center instead of about, um, about O. And so they, they came up with a completely different um, method for working out where the complex numbers were, which wasn't valid with this because the rotation was about a different point. Okay. Uh, there was the first mark for recognizing, yeah, okay, I know that I should multiply by a complex number to achieve that rotation. And then the final mark was for just getting your expression for B dash. Okay. Yes. Okay. If, if you can't get the first part, Obviously, this only in the paper, I would move on and I would come back. Yeah. You can make assumptions. You could say, for instance, suppose I'm doing, I'm doing this line of working here, right? And I know I get something out here that I'm like, no, no, that's not right. Okay. But if I work from that, from that point, I can still garner some marks later on if I've got it completely wrong. Okay. If what I'm demonstrating in part three and four still is valid and hasn't simplified the question. Okay. If you stopped, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like that's an exam technique. Um, maybe probably the, the time that you ended up saving, you can use on the end of the paper. If you get nothing and it's like, oh, I suddenly have 15 minutes at the end of the paper, maybe because I can't do that much of the paper, and um, I want to do something, you can actually you can say things like, right? Um, for say for the next part, which depends on this, right? I could say assuming b dash equals, and you know. You could at least make a guess. You could make something reasonable. Suppose, you know, you might say uh, root two Z. That's completely wrong, okay? But at least I can go with a value and then I can do some things next and I can get some, get some marks. If you're in that unusual situation where it's like, I have nothing else to do except for try something. You've got nothing to lose. So that's, that's something you can do. 
Part three, uh, not much to say on that one. Um, you just had to make some reference to the vector OB dash, and you're pretty much there. And part four was actually really well done. For those people who got there, I was pleased with that, um, seeing the marks. There was a geometric reasoning to get E and how it relates to everything else. Again, the diagram was tremendous help. And you can see back on mine, it's plain as day where E has to be, right? Like you get this tremendous advantage of the fact that it's a square. You know what? You can draw a decent square and you can work out where that is. I know with the other conic sections, that's harder to do. But for this one, there was no excuse, okay?